Fran, the end is near. Oh, the end? What end? Well, of making my quilt top. <gasps> We're almost done. Oh, that's awesome. So exciting. Yeah, keep watching. Hi, it's Fran Morgan with Fabric Cafe, and I am here with Hannah Johnson. And today we are going to be putting Hannah's quilt top together. Yeah. Ha Hannah's going to be putting yeah. Hannah's quilt top together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to step through that. Now, last video, mm -hmm. um, we assemble blocks. You assemble right. blocks. Yeah. And that went well? I think so. I think they went, um, my seams are definitely getting better. I, I can tell my quarter inches are getting more and more consistent the more blocks that I make. That's great. So that's exciting. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, your blocks look great. I've had a little sneak peek. So now uh, we've got our blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to start squaring them up so that we can put the quilt top together. Mm -hmm. What is the most helpful thing about squaring them up? Why is it so important to do it? I feel like that if they're not square and you start trying to um, ooch your seams together like they'll kind of get puckery and you okay. don't want them to pucker mm -hmm. because once we do get that to the long arm we want a nice flat quilt top mm -hmm. and it needs to be really crisp for that or there will be little tucks in the quilting. Gotcha so, okay keeping, so yeah very important. Yeah keeping them really nice and square it's going to go together much faster your rows mm -hmm. will go together faster your top will look really beautiful. All right, well then let's get into it. Okay, so we have um, a block A on our stepping mm -hmm. stones pattern. The block A is actually simply a solid piece of fabric mm -hmm. that Hannah has cut, and you basically squared these when mm -hmm. you cut them. Yeah, since I used the square. Right, so that's perfect. So really in this case, these blocks are already squared, so we mm -hmm. don't need to focus on them so much. They're the right, Perfect size. Yeah. Because we, we double check Yay. those together and they're great. Yeah. Which is was time saving in the long run. Start with your square on your blocks and it'll save you time later. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> good, good, good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to basically focus on our block B. Mm -hmm. Which, Hannah, I look at this and I just think she did an amazing job <gasps> Thank you. on piecing this block together. I think your seams look fabulous here. I am very proud of my corners. They met <laughs> up quite nicely. It's very, very good. So we need to square this. Now our finished block, um, it's not our finished block, our block mm -hmm. with the seam allowance is going to be eight inches. Yes. So we need to square eight. that. So we're going to go back to our 12 and a half inch square like we had before. Mm -hmm. And when you square these blocks, um, Something that we need to keep in mind is that, let me just move this back off again. We have these unit pieces on the side. Mm -hmm. We wanna make sure that this center block stays in the center mm -hmm. and that when we square this to eight, you don't trim everything off the same side so that this is smaller than this side. Gotcha, you wanna make sure that it's even all the way around. Correct. Okay. That's right. And that way it keeps everything really balanced and your squares don't kind of get mm -hmm. kind of wonky on your quilt. That must be my favorite word. I always say that, don't I? I do too. <laughs> <laughs> so um, first thing we need to remember is we're at eight inch. So we're always going to be kind of keeping that line of the ruler in mind. Mm -hmm. But in this case, like I said, we want to make sure that we don't cut more off of one side than the other. And we also have this block here. Now, our units before this one seam allowance, do you remember what size they were? Two and a half. Okay. Long well, we'll look at that. Yeah, two and a half. There's a pattern okay, right there. Okay, perfect. So because we've taken one seam allowance, that means that this needs to be two and a quarter. Right. With the, with the quarter inch seam allowance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the two and a quarter mark on my ruler, and then the top one should also be two and a quarter. And we're gonna kind of line that up. Now, do you see how I have the two and a quarter mark on that seam line of that center block there? Oh yeah, okay. right along the little right. green square. Now, as you can see, our eight is here. So we're gonna kind of just shift it and adjust it, ensuring that we have this this green block kind of in the center. So it looks mm -hmm. like we're pretty good on two and a quarter on this side. 
-hmm. And it looks like on this side we need to kind of just kind of bump it down and let's get this as centered as possible. So that um, these and these are about the same distance? About the same. So, okay. Now it's not, even an experienced quilter will sometimes have it not be perfect. So don't worry about it if it's not exactly where it needs to be. But just keep in mind that the goal is to keep this green block that falls in the center. Yours may be, of course, another color. Um, but we want that green block in the center with a basic overall eight inch square. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna cut even amounts off each side. So I'm going to just kind of um, look at this. So here is my two and a quarter. I have two and a quarter. And so. then you have this, the, the two and a quarter corner right here and that nice diagonal. Oh, you're right. See, that's, that's a great observation that she just made so that that angle goes right through. So whenever mm -hmm. it keeps the ruler square. So basically we're just going to kind of uh, shift to this ruler until we are pretty comfortable that we have a balanced two and a quarter on each side, even if it's not gotcha. exactly two and a quarter and then trim off the top and bottom. Okay. Da, 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 da. You got this. Gotta keep it. Our okay. full body quilting here. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's, you know, our men have full contact sports, like, you know, football. We have full <laughs> contact quilting. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, beautiful cut. I love the way that you kept your pressure on your ruler and took the edges off. I think that's mm -hmm. perfect. That way, this block doesn't shift. And it looks so nice and pretty it on the does. edges now. So now we're going to pick up our ruler mm -hmm. and turn your block completely around. Okay, so we'll end up with this on the top. Yes. <laughs> so we've cut two sides. Now we're gonna cut the other two. Do we line it up the same way we just did? Um, in this case, because you've already lined it up on the first cut mm -hmm. to make sure that your center is center, mm -hmm. um, we really could just line it up on the eight inch mark because that's the size square that we're trying to cut. Okay. So the second cut is actually a little easier. Now, I always just kind of give it a glance to make sure that I'm still good, but usually it works out just perfect. Oh, that's true, because you can line it up on the eight and then just right. look, and they're, and wow, can they're see. like right on the money. Yay. Oh. So then we just give that a trim. I didn't realize how great squares were. I, I It's yeah. been a learning experience for sure. It, I use my square so, so much whenever I'm doing my quilting. And I have multiple sizes because sometimes I just need a little one and sometimes I can use a 12 and a half and sometimes I have an 18 and a half. <laughs> so it's a great tool to have in your tool kit. Yeah. Now this looks amazing. <gasps> so I'm going to give you a little bit of time to square up the rest of your blocks okay. and then we'll start putting rows together. Hey Hannah, hey, how's it going? It's going. I have squared up all my blocks and now I'm ready to get the quilt top put together. These look fabulous. Thank you. This is going to be such a pretty quilt. I'm just so excited to see it done. Me too. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. Okay, it looks like you're doing a great job laying out um, and you are laying them out in rows, which is mm -hmm. perfect, which I love to do. And then when you when you start doing this, just to mm -hmm. let everybody know, um, we will consult our pattern. There is mm -hmm. an assembly diagram for the quilt on the pattern, wow. and it's usually shown here. Mm -hmm. Very helpful. Yeah. And so I see that you have started with row one. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yeah. And, and the reason, so Fran gave me a tip earlier, too. Um, she likes to, she was telling me about how she quilts and you lay your whole quilt out before you even start, I do, right? I do, and we were laughing that some people have a quilting floor, I have a quilting bed, I lay everything out on my guest mm -hmm. bed. <laughs> but it makes sense, I mean it's, I feel like it's, it's more difficult when you don't have it all laid out because you can't see everything. Right, and it also kind of gives you a sneak peek of what it's gonna be like, oh, which I like true. that too. Oh, that's exciting. So, and as, as you were doing here, we've got our first two rows down. Mm -hmm. um, row number one is the very top row in your quilt, mm -hmm. and then row number two. And as we mentioned, always consult um, to make sure that your directions are, your, excuse me, your block is going the right mm -hmm. direction. <laughs> So I see that 
like on this one, it looks like we're upside down. I am. So we'll just flip that one. No problem. That's that is part of Fran, the beauty. Fran, you flipped it too many times. <gasps> I did. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that's one thing with this one. It's very easy to get one it's turned. Swapped. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a good time and a, a good way to just double check to make yeah. sure they're all going the direction that you want. And another little tip, just for future reference, if you were using a uh, fabric that was a directional fabric here, mm -hmm. this is a good time to check to make sure that it's, mm -hmm. you know, the top is the top and the bottom is the bottom. <laughs> make sure it's all going the right yep. way. It's a nice, it's a nice check. Yep. Or just even look at looking at these if you don't like any of the directions, it would be mm -hmm. a good direction of the print. So what I do is I lay all of my blocks down on my quilting bed there <laughs> or the floor or whatever you have to work with and put them all in order just to make mm -hmm. sure everything looks good. Mm -hmm. And then, once I have them laid out, I sew them by row. Mm -hmm. Row one, and then I do row two. Mm -hmm. And I always, after I sew my row, I bring it back to my surface and put it in place. <gasps> do, okay. you, do you press it before you put it in place? After you do all the blocks? Actually, I do. And the reason why I do that is because it actually forces me to get up and change my activity and what I'm doing. Uh -huh. So if I sew for a little bit, I don't want to sew, 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 sew. I think it makes me stiff and I need yeah. to be relaxed. So if I get up, I do a little pressing, lay it back out, get the next stack, mm -hmm. go back to the machine, it kind of breaks up those tasks. That makes sense. Because when I, when I pressed my, um, my block Bs, I did find I had sewn all the sides on first and did all the sewing because it was easy and it was fast. But then when it got to the ironing, I felt like I was ironing for an eternity. <laughs> and I already hate ironing, so. No one likes iron, fast. really. <laughs> yeah. I have an ironed article of clothing and I can't tell you when. It's only for quilting. For quilting, so. Exclusively. So it's a good way to break it up just to kind of, yeah. you know. Um, one of the things that I do is I sew by row, as we've mentioned, mm -hmm. and then I always start left to right, mm -hmm. and I stack. So I will just kind of do this right here, and then I pick them up and stack. And what I do is sew oh. the first two together, mm -hmm. and then in this case, I would sew number three on, uh -huh. and then I would sew number four on and just stack them left to right. So when I pick this one up, I know that this is still the top, Mm -hmm. This is still the top, and these go this way. Okay. And whenever I open it up off the machine, I put the next one here. Yeah. So that's kind of how I prefer to do it. Mm -hmm. And in my head, it keeps me a little bit more organized, and I don't accidentally flip a block in the process of sewing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that so, makes sense. So I... And Here's, here's a, also a thought for the newbies out there like me. If you are nervous about your blocks, mm -hmm. I've discovered that um, if, you're, you're, if you have it here and you wanna, mm -hmm. you're worried about what direction it's gonna open and then it's actually gonna be going the right way, I always just like test it before I even pin it. I'm like, okay, yes. I'm sewing here. All right, this is gonna be right. Because when I made the So Quick quilt, when I was doing this part, there were a few times where I had those rows, they had gotten swapped somehow. So I had to like jigsaw puzzle around like, well, this matches that part. Uh, so that's part not sewn yet. So <laughs> go here. That's a great idea. That's very good. And you know, just now thinking about it, another thing that I do whenever I have a block that has to go a certain direction like we have mm -hmm. on stepping stones, I will actually go through and on each block put a straight pin in the top of the oh. block so I know that that edge is always top and That's I know smart. that it's not turned. Yeah, because that is, I'm really nervous about getting these directions wrong on this one. <laughs> I'm going to get it. <laughs> worried my steps are going to go yeah, all sorts of ways. So that's great. So I'm going to step away, let you go ahead and get sewing those rows together. Okay. And once again, once you finish one row, get it pressed, bring it mm -hmm. back and put it in its place. Mm -hmm. Put number one at the top and then once you finish number two, put it under that and get your whole quilt all in the order as it should be mm -hmm. so that you can see it all laid out. And then we'll come mm -hmm. back and we'll look at sewing those rows together. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Okay. So I have my first row of uh, blocks all nice and stacked in order from left to right. 
So I'm gonna walk through what Fran taught me. So I take my first block and I take my second block and just flip it over and pin it so that I know it's gonna open up correctly. And uh, before I came over to the machine, Fran gave me a nice little reminder of make sure that you pin the corners of your blocks together so that way they match up and they're nice and neat. So that's where I'm gonna pin first. I'm gonna line up my corner and pin over here so that way it stays nice and together and flat. And I'm gonna line that up and come over here and oh, it's just nestling up so nicely on the edges. Put my little pin in here and then I'm ready to go. Also, I have my little handy dandy seam ripper here to help feed my fabric through when it gets a little too close for my fingers. Oh, it doesn't have, I'm used to, my mom's old um, sewing machine is an old singer where you flip the back, the foot with the lever in the back. I'm sure many of you have had those too. And then I'm also gonna use my um, seam ripper to make sure that seam stayed down. The other one was staying nice and flat, so I wasn't worried about it, but that one looked like it needed a little bit more help. And then, there we go. So then, there's my first two. Well, for you, it would be this direction. There's my first two. And then I'm just gonna take the other, the third block and put it here. And then I'm just gonna pin this and I'm gonna keep on going like that down the rest of my row. And then I'm gonna start on the next row. Okay, Fran, so I have all my rows. Well, we're just putting the two up on the table here so it's not like overflowing. <laughs> um, okay. They're nice and they're pressed, sewn together. Um, if you want any tips on your pressing, uh, you can watch the last video when we go over how to press your seams open. Oh, great idea. Thanks for the reminder. Mm -hmm. And these look great. I think that so far you are getting gold stars in every Thank area. You. I'm so <laughs> excited. It's going together. So it's going together easily. A little more challenging than so quick just because there's an extra mm -hmm. um, strip assembly and the block's just a little more complicated. But it's really going together really quickly. Well, you've done a great job. Thank and you. so we have our rows one mm -hmm. and two here. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get on to the next part, though, I do have a question. Okay. While I was sewing these blocks, I remember mm -hmm. you told me to, um, if you have any discrepancies in your blocks, to put the one that's a little bit bigger on the back, on the bottom. Right. And I don't remember. Why? <laughs> Why? Okay. So many, many, many years ago, just a little story, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I actually learned how to sew by sewing garments first. So my mother always taught me, love my mom, she always taught me how to put the garments together and we would always pin very carefully. Mm -hmm. And that was actually came from garment sewing, I believe. Mm -hmm. And she always said that if you have pieces that don't line up just so, that if one is slightly bigger, put it on the bottom against the feed dogs of your sewing machine. And she said, usually the feed dogs will make up the difference on that one that's just a little mm. bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I know that machines today are very, very different than that old <laughs> slantomatic singer that I used to sew on then, but I still do that and it mm -hmm. still seems to kind of do the trick for me. Mm -hmm. So okay. I've just always continued to do that if there's just a little bit of discrepancy. So mm -hmm. thank you, mom. I've always appreciated all of the tips that you gave me growing up and sewing. Yeah, they stuck with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, are you ready to start putting your rows together? I think so. Great, okay. So we've got row one and two, mm -hmm. and whenever I put my rows together, remember, we've got them all laid out on the bed. So mm -hmm. normally, 
you would have all, let's see, how many rows do we have on this quilt? Um, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Whoa, seven. that's a lot more than the Silk Quick. <laughs> it's actually only two more, I think. Oh, you got it, you got it. Okay, so um, you would have all seven rows laid out, whether it be mm -hmm. on your bed or on your wall or whatever you have that you're working with, mm -hmm. and making sure that everything is positioned correctly and mm -hmm. everything. Double checking that your steps yep. are going the right way. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> And then I kind of just look at it and, and form a strategy on putting my rows mm -hmm. together. Um, I prefer, like in this case, I would do sew two rows together, mm -hmm. bring them back, sew the next two rows. So I'd sew row one and two, bring it back, put it on my wall or my layout. Mm -hmm. And then I would sew rows three and four together, mm -hmm. and then four and five, and so on like that. Now, because there's seven rows on this mm -hmm. one, the very bottom one, I would go ahead and do a set of three. Okay. But I kind of form that strategy before I get going. Mm -hmm. And then I go back after that and those are all pressed. I'll sew the first and second groupings together. Yeah. And then the bottom groupings together and then okay. the two big groups together. Okay, okay. So that that helps you not get so bulky then. Right. Okay. Right. It's more bite sized chunks. You only have to deal with a whole bunch of quilt <laughs> right. one so, or two times. That's true because otherwise you've got all of this that you're working with and it just yeah. gets crazy. So this way it, it minimizes the amount of time they're using the big bulk. Yeah, okay, so that's that seems helpful. Okay, okay, so then we'll start, since our first two ones, we'll just go ahead and pin these and then mm -hmm. go sew that together. Right, okay. okay. So the first thing we wanna do, of course, is put them right sides together. And for any newbies out there who are like, what does the right side mean? It means the pretty side. Okay, and then of course, um, we are going to be pinning at each uh, block seam. We want those okay. seams to match, so. Do you start with those or do you start on the ends? Um, I think you can do either way, it doesn't really matter, mm -hmm. but the seams are the most important. So normally whenever I sew these together, I do the seams first okay. and then go back and do the edges or any middle pins that I might wanna put in there just to keep it together. Now Hannah, just mm -hmm. a quick reminder and also mm -hmm. for those of you sewing along with us, always use a nice flathead pin. Mm -hmm. uh, put your pin in, e directly through the seam and make sure that it's in the seam on both sides. You've obviously done a perfect job of this because your your square seams are matching perfectly. Thank you. Well, it was helpful thinking you pin it straight down and then you make it come back through. Okay, so that one's pinned. Yep. And then you can definitely pin the end there. Okay. And I always do pin my ends. I think that that does help on keeping everything nice and even on the edges. Everything's squared, so it should match very well. How far, like how close to the edge do you pin? I usually do about a half an inch. Okay. Let's see if I, I'm good at my measurements. Yep. Perfect. And then you would just continue pinning across. And this is kind of a tedious step that you do in quilting, but I think it's really, really necessary to take the time and pin these. Um, I think that is what makes those great uh, matching blocks and edges so that you, whenever you turn it over and you're all done, you can have that nice pride. All right, that looks great. Okay, so Good. then I'm gonna do these and then I'll put them back on my table. Then I'll take uh, rows three and four Sew those together, and then I'll sew the three monsters at the bottom all together, <laughs> and then and then keep going from there and sew all of those, and then I'm gonna have a completed quilt top. <gasps> Almost. Oh yeah. <laughs> we still have borders. That's right. But so close to a completed quilt top. Almost there. We're almost there. <laughs>
top completely put together. Yeah. It looks amazing. Thank you. And I'm, all of the stepping stones are going the right direction. Yes. <laughs> I checked that a lot of times. Well, that's very good. I know that whenever I'm putting a top together, I do the same thing. I'm always mm -hmm. checking it, making sure, okay, do I have them in order? Do I have uh -huh. my rows in order? Do I have my blocks in order? Because <laughs> it's a lot easier to double check before you sew than to have to seam rip. Absolutely. I agree with you totally. And it still happens sometimes. So you just yeah. have to roll with it a little bit. But you did a great job. Thank you. So are you ready to work on the borders? I think so. Awesome. So on our pattern, let's mm -hmm. just kind of refer to that really quick. Okay. Um, it does look like we have corner blocks on this quilt. Mm -hmm. And of course, it does step out in number three here, um, your three and a half inch by with the fabric strips for the top top and side borders. Mm -hmm. In order to get the corner blocks on, one of the first steps we need to do is actually measure the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we'll cut our pieces to that size. Okay. So do you have a tape measure for I us? I do have a Perfect. tape measure. All right, tell you what, I'll hold this end, you hold that end, okay. and let's just come over here. And, and of course you can do this by yourself, but it's so nice that Hannah's here. Yeah. We can do it together. It's nice to have so, buddies on your <laughs> sewing. All right, so we have our measurement of? 38 and a quarter. All right, perfect. So we're gonna take, according to the instructions, we're gonna take mm -hmm. one of our border strips and we mm -hmm. need to cut it 38 and a quarter. Okay. And then of course you do want to measure your bottom as well, just to make sure we're close mm -hmm. there. More than likely, it is also 38 and a quarter, but it's always a good practice, I think. Yeah, because I was off a little bit, not drastically on my last one. I think I was off about a quarter of an inch okay. from the top and the bottom, so that makes sense. Right. Do you think right. that, is that like a, a common thing that kind of um, happens? It can happen because you have so many rows that you're putting together in the seam allowances. If you're off just a scooch on your seam allowances, sometimes it can make a difference. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, always, it's always a good practice. So we have a perfect border strip here. Yeah. Now, I see that you have not trimmed your selvages off, so make sure you do that. Mm -hmm. And then we'll trim that 38 and a quarter. Okay. And then once that is done, of course, you're going to repeat it for the bottom measurement and the bottom strip. And then you'll sew your corner blocks on. Okay. I have my so corner have... blocks. Great. And then they'll just... So then just... you just sew it onto the edge here. Yes, well, on both ends, but think, think. Okay. All right, you think you got that? I think so. All right, awesome. And, and then you put those to the side, right? And move Correct. them to the side? So borders? we just, we get those made, move okay. them off to the side. You got that. I do remember doing that. Now okay. I worked ahead a little bit mm -hmm. and the pattern also says um, to sew, it said to pull out two of your border pieces for the top and bottom. Right, okay. And then it wanted me to sew together all the rest of my border pieces into one long thing. Yep, now we are working with the three yard economy quilt mm -hmm. and part of the reason why we sew the strips end to end is so that we can just have that long run and use every single bit of that oh, fabric. Oh, okay. okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And I did trim off my selvages before I did this. All right. Perfect. So you Perfect. get this one like big long <laughs> feather boa like thing. Or a quilter scarf, oh, whichever yeah. you prefer. <laughs> so you're gonna sew that strip on one side, mm -hmm. then trim it even with the edge, and then sew to the other side. Okay. Trim even with that edge. Then we come back and put the top and the bottom on, those pieces that you set aside earlier. Is is there now I did the side borders on the first one quilt as well. So is that just a normal thing? You always do the side before the top? Normally so, three yard patterns are written that way. But another uh, point for this particular quilt is because it has corner blocks. If we had our strip with our corner blocks sewn on, you haven't sewn that border on yet if you try to do that first. And so they're, they're gonna be sticking out past oh, that border. That makes sense. I would make things very difficult. <laughs> yeah, so then you, you just really have it go. Them. Right. Because then you have to come, oh yeah, that's just messy. Yeah. Oh, so I understand <laughs> why messy. you do the sides. <laughs> right. Now sometimes you actually are going to sew all five border strips together mm -hmm. and then do your measurement across the top. Mm -hmm. And it really is pattern dependent one way or the other. The reason why we hold two strips out on occasion 
is because the quilt is narrow enough that you can get the full top and bottom length from a single strip. So mm -hmm. if we can do that, we do like to do that. Yeah. If the quilt is a little bit wider and we need to sew them end to end, that's when we sew all five together. Gotcha. But in your case, we can do it with just one yeah. strip. Yeah. It really makes it easier when you can do that, not sewing all five together. That is true. <laughs> it saves me a little bit of sewing. Yep. And that makes sense. Even just looking at the quilt, mm -hmm. you can tell like one strip is wider than the quilt. Right. So right. If, you, if you're having trouble calculating in your brain, you can just look at your quilt too and be like, oh, yep. this is Lay longer. It on there. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. So get your corner block sewn on. Okay. You got that handled. And then we'll do our sides, put our top and bottom on. And then we're going to be ready to get it ready for the long arm quilting. Yeah. I'm very excited. Now, next time we're gonna have Lucinda join us and she's our long arm quilter. Yeah. And she's going to share with you how to prepare your quilt for the long arm quilter, everything that you need, mm -hmm. materials, preparation, all of that kind of thing. So super excited about yeah, that. Yeah, super excited. So <laughs> make sure you're here next time and you're gonna see the completed quilt top and get to meet Lucinda, yep. which is gonna be awesome. It will be, and don't forget to share this video with your friends, mm -hmm. uh, like and subscribe, and be sure to hit that little bell on the side and you'll get notification of the next video. Bye. Bye-bye, have a great day.